We can now bring in our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Doug, great to see you. Israel says uh, its forces are in Gaza. Phase two has begun. What is phase two exactly? Well, we actually don't know because there's so much we're in the dark about, uh, in part because uh, most of the Palestinian uh, telecommunications network, all communications went down. So we weren't really able to get any uh, real witness testimony, eyewitness testimony out of Gaza. So all we really know, yes, some of the networks now back up. Um, there's, you know... A lot of people believe uh, it was shut off deliberately by the Israelis, not by the Palestinians' the communications, in order to perhaps uh, provide the cover, cover of literal darkness for this operation. What are they? Well, according to all we know is from the Israeli Defense Forces. So tanks have entered uh, Gaza from Israel at several points, perhaps at least three points that we, we can cite. Uh, they've gone down the western flank of Gaza City, the largest city in, in Gaza Strip, uh, perhaps to try the, the tactic trying to be to surround it to snuff out to eliminate uh, what Israel says are the, the Hamas command centers, the Hamas targets. There have been hundreds of those Hamas targets that the Israeli Defense Forces say that they have uh, eliminated or, or wiped out. And presumably this will be some sort of preparatory maneuver uh, en route to a phase three, which we don't know really what that would mean. Phase three being perhaps a full-scale, uh, a full-fledged ground troop invasion. Maybe that will happen. Maybe it won't happen. We don't know. Uh, but I can tell you from the civilian perspective, from what the Palestinians are saying is it's more of a hellish hellscape being mm. created right now. We were already saying there is no reporting based on what we've been hearing, no safe place in Gaza, right? Yeah. A tiny, compact strip, densely populated strip of land, no safe place to go. You're hearing that more and more now from the few voices that are getting out, the testimonials basically saying that there's this sense of hopelessness. There's a sense that anywhere you are at any moment, death could potentially be inevitable. You can be struck anywhere, because from their point of view, the Israeli Defense Forces, these strikes are now indiscriminate because the Israeli Defense Forces have basically provided the justification that Hamas is using uh, schools and hospitals uh, and mosques uh, as cover, basically, mixing among civilians, mm -hmm. making any p target potentially a legitimate military target, which means any Palestinian civilian who happens to be there or in the vicin vicinity who is hit is also uh, just a casualty of war, uh, collateral damage from what is a strategic campaign to wipe out Hamas. So there's really that right now. Intenser, even if that's possible, more intense than we saw in the initial phases of airstrikes, tanks on the ground, and a sense of the Palestinians that are still there, especially in the north of Gaza, that death can come at any time. Missiles, airstrikes in any single place. You're not safe anywhere in your home underground anywhere you are, and there's no real place to flee. Even if in the South it's slightly less better conditions, I say better conditions in quotes, they're not really better conditions because you still have the same sense of pervasive 24-7 fear that you could die at any second.